In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the Users and Groups section of administration. There are a number of built-in groups into Adobe Connect. These are system groups that can be used to give privileges to the different users. You can also create your own administrative groups, and training managers can create training groups. So to look at this, let's first click on Administration. Of course, you'll need to be an administrator or a limited administrator to uh, access this area. And then from Administration, we can click on Users and Groups. This takes us by default to probably the most useful tab under Users and Groups, and that's the Users and Groups tab, where we can actually see a list of all of the different users. Before we look at this, though, let's look at what else is included under the Users and Groups section. The first link here is called Customize User Profile, and this enables an administrator to define what fields can be collected and associated with each user that's entered into the system. And these fields can be used for not just storing personal profile data, but also generating custom reports. Any of these fields can be used for filtering. Additionally, there are certain special fields like Cost Center that can be used for generating special reports. So as we're taking a look at this, you'll see that there are a number of fields that I've got on this particular account. Some of them are required fields, and this red asterisk defines or indicates that this is a required field. I can add predefined fields. So there are a number of different system fields that I can simply add. If I just want to include everybody's rank, I can do that by uh, clicking the checkbox. If the field I want to add isn't one of the predefined fields, I can simply add a new field myself, clicking the new field button and entering in the field name, a comment if I'd like, and indicating whether it should be required or not. Besides the customized user profile, we've got the edit login and password policies. This is an important element into the administration to help secure your Adobe Connect environment. And this has actually changed fairly recently. The first one is probably the most important, and that indicates whether the email address of the users should be used as their login. By default, this is set to yes, which means that users will use their primary email address as a way to identify themselves, along with a password to log in. If you prefer not to use email addresses, that is an option by changing that to no. Underneath the login policy, we've got the password policies. You can set expiration dates. You can require certain characters to be included in passwords that get created, uh, whether they have to contain a number, a capital letter. You can set minimum and maximum password lengths as you're setting up your password policy. And you can also now prevent the reuse of old passwords and even indicate uh, how long the history should be. So we can take up to 13 uh, previous passwords. None of these are, of course, stored in plain text. They're all salted hashes. But we'll take a look at the old salted hashes to identify whether somebody's reusing an old password or not. In addition to passwords, rooms can also be set with passcodes. And if I want to enable, enable the passcode option on my Adobe Connect account, this is where I would do it. I would enable meeting hosts to enforce a passcode for room access. That way, instead of having people log in, they could simply require a pass, password or passcode to get into that meeting. I could even force that as an option to require every meeting to always include a passcode. I'm going to leave that as the default and turn that off. Um, and the, the final step in this is a relatively new section that we've added that enables event managers to create events and have people log into those events, register and actually log into the event itself using social profiles like Facebook or Google. So all of these password policies are available here in the Edit Login and Password Policies section. Another important link in the Users and Groups section is the ability to import a list of users. Obviously, this is not something you want to be doing manually if you're looking to incorporate thousands of users into your Adobe Connect account. This section allows you to simply specify a spreadsheet, a comma-separated values list of hundreds or thousands of users, and they can be imported into the system. This is typically used to import new users into the Adobe Connect system, but it can also be used to get existing users set into a specific group. It's an easier way of setting maybe a thousand users into a new system group that you've created. So you'll see here that I can select the import type, whether I'm creating new users, whether I'm using this to create actually new groups into the system. I can create new users and add them to one of the existing groups that already exists. Or if they're existing users, if they're already in the system, I can add them to a specific group. So again, they don't have to be brand new users to the system. 
the second part of this allows me to select a specific comma separated values file that does need to be formatted in a certain way and the documentation gives you the example it needs to have a first dash name a last dash name login email password it can also include any of the other profile fields that you've added as you're setting up these custom profiles these are really just the minimum number of fields that are required I've got the options in this section to send an email to all of the new users. So after they're imported, they're notified that they've now gotten an account on my Adobe Connect system. And I can also prompt them to change their password the first time they log in. That's probably a good idea if you're using a spreadsheet or a comma separated values file to import people. They may have uh, all the same password or certainly it's a good idea to have them change their password. So you've got very unique passwords for each and every user in the system. Beside the import link is the link for cost centers. And this enables administrators to set up cost centers for reporting. And there are a few options around cost center reporting. First of all, it's an option that we can enable in this section. And then once it's enabled, we can choose how the cost centers will work. Should people be charged based on who is the host of the meeting? Or do we want to allocate minutes to each individual attendee? This is completely up to the administrator. It's an option that doesn't even need to be turned on. But if it is turned on, it gives the administrator a lot of flexibility in determining how to charge back the cost of Adobe Connect. Uh, the other option here is just to allow the meeting host to determine how those minutes will be allocated. And of course, I can manage my cost centers using the Manage Cost Centers button here. This brings up a list of all of the cost centers along with their descriptions. And I can use the buttons at the bottom to add edit or remove any of the existing cost centers. So that's a quick look at some of the different options that are available. Let's go back to the Users and Groups tab. This is where you'll spend most of your time in the Users and Groups section. So I said by default, it's going to list all of the different system groups, administrator groups, and users in the uh, Adobe Connect account. So it's an alphabetical list, starting with the groups though. So let's quickly go through each one of the system groups. These are groups that will be included in every Adobe Connect account. If it's called a system group, it's one of the default groups in your Adobe Connect account. The first one is uh, administrators, and that's obviously the group of administrators that you've got. This is obviously the highest level that you can have in Adobe Connect. It allows people to uh, access this administ administrative screen, but it doesn't give them godlike powers in Adobe Connect. An administrator can't necessarily create a new meeting or upload new content. For that, they'd need to be a meeting host or an author. Now, an administrator has got the access to add himself or herself to the meeting host's group, but by default, administrators can't necessarily do everything on the system. They need to add themselves to the appropriate group to give themselves those privileges. There's a group under administrators called Administrators Limited. By the way, to see who's in any of these groups, you can simply double click that group itself and that will show you a uh, a listing of all of the people that are in that group. If I go back up by clicking up one level, uh, the other option is to click on information. And there is a view group members button that I can click here, or I can edit group membership. And uh, clicking the view group members button will actually take me to the edit group membership uh, tab. There's an extra tab on this administrators limited group, and that's because it's a special group. And the permissions of a limited administrator actually vary based on an account. So the administrator can define what privileges a limited administrator can have. So in other words, a limited administrator is going to have a subset of the abilities of a full administrator. And the full administrator can actually define which, which abilities or which privileges those li limited administrators have. So for example, I can give my limited administrators the ability to reset a password, and add new users and groups, maybe even modify existing users and groups, but not to be able to delete existing users and groups. Or maybe I want to remove the ability for them to import a full comma separated values file of thousands of users. That's something that only full administrators should be able to do. So you can see here as I go down the list, I can define at a fairly granular level what privileges a limited administrator should have. Let's go back to the Users and Groups tab to look at some of the other system groups. Now we're getting into the individual system groups. Uh, authors are able to upload content to the shared content library without being a meeting host. So they'll have a My Content section of their content library. 
training managers are able to create and manage training, obviously, they also have the ability to create an, a type of group called training group. And we'll look at that in just a second. These are all system groups that we're looking at right now. Event managers can create events. Event administrators can not only create events, but also manage events, uh, edit things like shared event templates, email aliases, and they've got a lot more power inside of the events module. Learners is a group that's not typically used anymore. It's something that we've included to make sure that Adobe Connect works with, with previous versions. This uh, is a way to identify all of the different learners on the system. Meeting hosts have the privilege, uh, have the ability to create and manage their own meetings. So this is typically the group that's most used within the Adobe Connect system to enable the different users to create meetings. Seminar hosts can create seminar rooms and manage those seminar rooms. So those are the built-in system groups. You'll notice on my account, though, I've got a number of administrator groups. And these are groups that you may not see on your existing Adobe Connect account. These are groups that I've created as an administrator. So just as I could create a new user, I can also create a new group. And this is something that I can use, again, to help filter out people, whether it's for reports or whether it's because I want to create groups of people for a specific event or training module. Um, any reason I want, really, I can use these groups to help uh, manage all of my different users. And I can simply give them a name and a description and then start adding people to those groups. It's a great way to manage things like permissions on your Adobe Connect content library, giving certain groups permission for content and eliminating access for other groups. So we've got a number of administer, administrator groups. You'll notice we've also got a couple of training groups. I've got one here called EMEA Sales Team, another one here called US Sales Team. And these are special groups created by training managers. Now, a training manager doesn't have access to this uh, administration users and groups section. But we've added a users and groups section under the training module to allow training managers to create just a limited number of groups. And those are registered here as training groups. So they can add users from the system into their training groups. And then below that, we've got all of the different individual users in the system. And I can pick out my name right here. Again, if I want to see more information about this particular user, if I want to see which groups he belongs to, I can click on the information button uh, on the bottom. And that brings up some information about him. I can see all of the different profile information that may have been filled out. So all of the different profiles uh, fields that we've added uh, should show up here, things like phone number, department, and cost center. I can edit any of that information as an administrator. So if there's some information missing, I can add it. I can also edit group membership. And this is where I would go to understand which groups this user already belongs to. And uh, this is my account here, my profile. I can see that I'm set up as an administrator, an author, a training manager, an event manager, learner, meeting host, and seminar host. I've really added myself to all of those different groups. You'll notice there's a number of different system groups that I've been added to as well. Every time I attend or register for an event, that event has got an associated group and the users who are registered for that event are automatically added to that event group. Of course, I can click on any one of these and remove myself from that particular group if I'd like. In addition to being able to edit the group membership, we can also identify roles within organizations. So I can select my manager. I've got my manager included, for example, in my profile. That way my manager can generate reports on all of his employees, all of his subordinates, and get a nice tidy training report, for example. Um, I can edit team members. If I'm also a manager, I can add individuals to the team members section to identify who my managerial reports should uh, include. And there's even a report section. If an administrator wants to view the training reports or, re or the meeting reports for an individual user, he can use this report section to do that. I'm going to head back to the Users and Groups tab now. That's a quick look at an individual user, but you'll notice there's a couple of other buttons down in the bottom here around managing and viewing guests. What's the difference between a user and a guest? Guests may be something on the system that's actually not even being used, but it comes down to events and how people register for events. If I move off of the Users and Groups tab over to the Account Information,
I'm going to click on the Edit Information tab. And I can see that there's an event user policy set. And this is a policy that applies to all of the different events that are being created if you're using the Adobe Connect event module. As we're creating events, we may have hundreds or thousands of people registering for those events. We may not want them in our standard user database. So Adobe Connect can manage those registrations with a separate user database that's, that's held separately so that they're not mixed in with all of your internal employees, for example. This is probably the best way to do it, is to set up events so that people are set up as registered guests rather than full users of the system. By full users, it doesn't mean that they've got the ability to create meetings, but it does mean they're going to show up with all of the other users that you've got in your system. So as an administrator, under Edit Information, you can choose whether people signing up for events are full users of Adobe Connect, in which case they'll be added to that full user directly, directory, or whether they're created as guests, in which case you can still administer them, but they'll be off in a separate area. And that's what this Users and Groups Manage Guests section is. If, you're, if your registrants are added as guests, then that's where you'll go to manage them. The third option here lets event managers choose whether people signing up for events should be just guests or full users. That's what we've got this particular account set to. So if I go back to Users and Groups and then choose to View Guests, this will show me all of the people that have registered for specific events. And you can see there are quite a few. The, it starts off by listing all of the events. So these are the groups that are created as we create events. So if I want to see, for example, uh, really quickly who's registered for a specific event, I can click on that and see all of the different registered users for that event. As we scroll down past the groups, though, we get into the individual users. Now, right now, we're just on the view guests button. If I want to actually manage these guests and maybe convert some of them to full users, I can click on the manage guests button. That'll show me a very similar look. You'll notice I've got two different columns now. I've got a list of all of the guests minus the different groups. And I can select one of these guest names and convert to a full user. And that will move that individual user or that individual guest over into my user directory. And I can certainly uh, shift click or control click to select more than a single guest to move them over to the full users directory. So that's a look at the users and groups section under administration inside of Adobe Connect. Thanks for watching.